Documentary, a movie or TV program presenting facts and information, especially about a political, historical, or social issue. Documentary is a movie that tells a true story based on facts. Ten teenagers, in a collaboration between the Cooperative Image Group and After School Matters, both Chicago organizations that provide learning opportunities for youth, each wore the hats of camera person, artist, interviewer, presenter, logger, typist, researcher, and editor, when in the summer of 2005, they became filmmakers. The 14 and 15 year olds came from varied backgrounds and did not know one another prior to the project, but had in common that they lived in scattered sites of the Chicago Housing Authority. I go to um, Thurgood Marshall Middle School. Notre Dame. CMSA. Roosevelt High School. Roberto Clemente Community Academy. I like to dance, sing, play football and basketball. Basketball. Running. Football. Play video games. I listen to hip hop, R&B, rap. Just all the different kind, but if I had to choose a singer that I really like, Mariah Carey and Michael Jackson. 50 Cent. Oh, I love Imano. That's my man right there. <laughs> Due to the ambitious goal of generating a documentary in such a short time period, it was necessary to overlap pre-production and production. After quick equipment and procedure tutorials, the teens morphed into videographers and by day three were out shooting. From community members to subject experts, from urban gardens to trash on the streets. The group captured the images necessary to tell their story. Some days were spent in Humboldt Park, others brought field trip excursions. New challenges continually arose, such as 100 degree weather, having to share equipment with other community groups, a torrential rainstorm in the midst of an outside journey, choosing between fun tasks and tedious tasks, and unexpected visitors. Again, overlapping of the film's phases had to occur. While interviews and background footage were being obtained, post-production commenced. Teens learned how to edit with Final Cut Pro, a high-end professional tool used to make such mainstream movies as Cold Mountain, Ocean's Eleven, and Napoleon Dynamite. In the final stage, the group focused on distribution of their film, from planning initial screenings to designing invitations to exploring circulation options. It was time to fit the pieces of the puzzle together to enjoy the resulting complete work of art. What I like best about Chicago is the shopping malls. It's a lot of things to do here. It's big, it's noisy. I don't like quiet places. And plus, they have good food. It has a lot of room for people to get to know each other. And at night, it's, um, when it's lit up, it's very beautiful. Why do you live where you live? What's important to you in a neighborhood? One of the areas the filmmakers examined was how where you reside affects your everyday existence, your job, your education, your health and how where you reside affects your level of choice. How much does it cost? Who would I be interacting with in that neighborhood? And then what would those interactions be like? And then how close is it to the other stuff in the city that I want to be involved with? My neighborhood is bad because throughout this week, two people got shot. And it's kind of like bad, but in a way it's good because the kids around and all that. So it's a good neighborhood. Because I grew up over there and I know everybody over there and it's, it's straight. It's convenient, and uh, it seems like a fun area. So every neighborhood has its own flavor. Gentrification. Inner city neighborhoods are converted into more affluent communities by remodeling buildings and landscaping, resulting in increased property battles and in the outflow of poor residents. Gentrification. The rebuilding of a neighborhood that can make poor people have to move. How do you feel about the new people coming in? Um, I think it's taking a lot from us. Um, it's it's like you know kicking us out of our neighborhood and making up a new neighborhood. So I don't think it's good. I mean, I found a place here for some pretty cheap rent, but I know that that the consequence of that was probably someone got pushed out. So I don't know. It's weird. It's like we got to figure out a way to work together so it's not happening. People aren't losing their homes. 
One thing that you see a lot all over when, when gentrification is, is affecting a community is there's a tension between affordability, like who can afford and pay, pay what it takes to pay to live in a place, and then livability. So like how nice is it, how clean is it, how healthy is it, how safe is it. And so a lot of times you see places getting more livable and less affordable at the same time. And so I, what I like about your project is that you're both looking at how do we make this a healthier place and how do we keep it affordable at the same time. So I really like what y'all are doing. The Challenge to an Apple a Day reports that families must often travel over half a mile to find a store that carries fresh produce, which is problematic as 21 to 38 percent of households in the surveyed communities did not have vehicles. My son was born with food allergies and um, I wanted to get him the best available food possible and I realized that I couldn't find that food in my neighborhood. If you, if you take a map and you actually plot out where, where the resources are for, for healthy food, I, I think you'll get a much better picture of, of uh, why people eat the way they do. Fresh fruits and vegetables are really important and you should have multiple servings a day of each of those. There's nothing more fundamental than food. Regardless of age, race, religion, or class, we all need it to survive. But how many of us know where our food was made, by whom, and with what resources? What happens on the path food takes from farm to kitchen table? And how does it affect us as humans and the planet we inhabit? When you pause to think about where the food you eat comes from, you may realize that you're not making the best choice for your body. Pesticide. Chemicals used to control, to repel, to attract, or to kill pests that compete with humans for our food, destroy property, spread diseases, or are considered a nuisance. Pesticides. Chemicals put on food to keep bugs away. Organic, anything involving your use of fertilized or pesticides. Organic, the food that doesn't have chemicals. The major benefit is for your health um, because pesticides and, and organic or chemical fertilizers, they sometimes are absorbed into the food and they get into your bodies. And then the other reason is it's better for the environment. Uh, and the third reason is it, it tastes better. It's going to affect how your body works and the extent to which you're able to produce children and the extent to which your children are going to be able to produce children and how healthy you are, it's, 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 it's dangerous, it's deeply dangerous. During interviews, the teens discovered why people choose to be patrons of and heard strong opinions on specific stores. Dominix, I shop at Whole Foods, I shop at um, local markets. Jules, Jules, Dominix, or Aldi's? Aldi's or the One Stop. I don't buy very much at the grocery store because we have a program that rescues food that grocery stores are going to throw out. So most of my food I get um, is going to be thrown out by a grocery store. They're close to my house, they're closer to me than you know, Whole Foods is so I shop there and I shop at Aldi's because it's cheaper. Depends on what you need but I like Cermak the best. Well, they got everything. They got everything. How do you feel <laughs> about the prices at Whole Foods? They're ridiculous. I don't shop here all the time at all. I just come once in a while. Oh it's really hard to park and sometimes it's full of people who are mean. I used to work at one in Austin and I didn't like it very much. At one stop I really don't look at the price. I just want to pick it up. You know. I'm trying to get out the store because one stop can get really, really crowded. Um, what do you think about the prices at Whole Foods? Um, much more expensive than anywhere else. Do you think it's worth paying the high price? Um, I think it is, but I think it's sad that not everyone can do that. Dominic, she say the prices are too high, but most of the time, since we're right around the corner, so we end up going, going in there anyways. Prices are usually better for the quality um, when you buy locally. Do you sell them at reasonable prices? I think so. Better than the other stores, there, right? Yeah, I mean, there's no markup here. It's like a farmer, so. I actually am pretty cheap. I'm thinking about raising them this year because I realize it's so much work. 